you have your Bibles, turn with me to Exodus chapter 2. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 2. There's a bulletin there and an outline in the bulletin if you want to follow along with us. Today I want to talk to you about a mother's love. And I'll just tell you this right off the bat. There is nothing like a mother's love. All right, I have experienced this in my own life. Uh, my dad worked a lot. And uh, the other thing that my mom did a lot of, he, she did a lot of negotiating uh, with my father about what needs to happen to me. And so uh, I am forever grateful uh, for my mom. And uh, we just thank God for all the moms uh, that, you, that are here this day. Let me give you the outline of mother's love. Number one, protects her children. Protects her children. I've learned at a young age, you don't mess with the mama's child, all right? You just don't do it. Number two, releases them to God. And this isn't easy to do, but it is biblical, releases them to God. And number three, trust God to finish his work. There are a lot of children that had a challenging or a rough start, and one of the ones we are talking about uh, today is Moses, okay? We remember all the big things that he did, uh, but uh, in his adulthood, uh, he did something uh, that, you know, you, some people think you couldn't get forgiveness uh, uh, for, but folks, I am telling you, the only uh, unpardonable sin is the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And so God forgives us of all of our past. You know, the theme of Exodus is deliverance. You cannot have deliverance without a deliverer. Exodus begins with the birth of Moses, and it also has Moses' call to the ministry in it. Another huge time in the life of Moses is, the, is God giving the Ten Commandments to him. Weaved all through the book of Exodus was God's hand on Moses' life, plus God's total protection in all that God called Moses to do. Let's look at Moses' humble beginning. A mother's love protects her children. Exodus 2 verse 1, And a man of the house of Levi, and uh, we know the Levi was the priestly uh, tribe, and went and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. And while they are not named here, they are named later on, uh, the man was Amram, this was Moses' father, and the mom was Jochebed, and that was Moses' mom. And by the way, he had two siblings. Uh, Myram was an older sister, and Aaron was an older brother, just to let you know. And it says, so the woman conceived and bore a son, and that son is Moses. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him for three months. And the question you have to ask if you're reading through the Bible is, why did she have to hide him? And I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Exodus 1. Look at Exodus 1, verse 8. Now there rose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And towards the, the, the last chapters uh, in Genesis is Joseph's life. And we understand all that Joseph, Joseph had went through. And, and uh, this comes to the place here where even, even Joseph saved his family from starvation and was second in command to the Pharaohs in Egypt. In verse 9, and he said to his people, look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. And again, they're talking about numbers, okay? Uh, they were a whole bunch of them. Some, somehow, one of the estimates I heard, uh, you know, before this particular time was 600,000. And we know as they grew and as they had children, uh, when he was, Moses was actually leading, there was somewhere around 2 million Jews that he was leading. And it says, uh, uh, come, let us deal sh uh, shrewdly with them, lest they multiply and it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us. And so go up out of the land. So what were they doing, the Egyptians? They were protecting themselves. They, in, and we'll skip the few verses there, but there 
uh, they worked them hard. They were unreasonable. They were basically slaves. They were working long hours. They were doing hard labor and all there. And one of the things I think that come out of this is they, the children of Israel and the men especially, uh, they were stronger, okay? A, a hard day's work could kill most of us, all right? Uh, I remember my father. He, he could work. It was unbelievable uh, what he could do in a day's time. And, and that was kind of what was going on there. Now look at verse 15. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of, of one was Shephira, and the name of the other was Pua. And he said, when uh, you do the duties of a, wid, uh, a midwife for the Hebrew women, see and see them on the birth stools. If it is a son, then you shall kill them. Can you imagine an edict like that? You know, a, a, a command like that? And folks, uh, you know, a, again, you know, the, the abortion issues, folks, it's a moral issue. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the baby, you know, it's, we believe, let me put it this way, life begins at conception. And so we need to protect our children and, and our babies especially. And it says, but if it's a daughter, then she shall live. But the, whip, the midwives feared God. Isn't that a nice saying there? They knew it wasn't right in their heart of hearts. And they did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them but save the male children alive. And you may look at this, but folks, when the government tells you you have to do something against the Word of God, we have to follow God. We have to do the right thing. And there's several instances of that in our current uh, government time. So, the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, why haven't you done this thing and sa saved the male children alive? And the midwife said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are lively and give birth before the midwives come to them. So they're basically making up an excuse, all right? They are just saying, you know, they have the kids before, you know, it, it's, it, they're, they're having them early. Uh, we, you know, we just, we don't have time. It's already done. And, and of course, that you know, probably wasn't true. Verse 20, therefore God dealt with the midwives and the people multiply and grew very mightily. And so it was because of the midwives feared God that he provided households for them. So Pharaoh commanded all of his people saying, every son who is born, you shall cast into the river and every daughter you shall save alive. So he was saying, if we can't get them before they're born, we will get them after, uh, after they are born. And folks, it's no different in Jesus' days. King Herod, uh, you, know, uh, you know, two years and under, and, and baby Jesus was that also. So you can see all through the history of the Bible, they were wicked kings that went against God's law. But we see here, Okay, Jochebed went to extreme to protect her son. She hid her son. First she hid her pregnancy, and then she hid her son to protect his life. Now look at verse 3. A mother's love not only protects her children, but releases them to God. Verse 3, but when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, dabbed it with asphalt and pitch, and put the child in it and laid it on the reeds by the river's bank. And again, you can see here why she did what she did. Uh, the older a child gets, uh, it, they're harder to hide. Uh, if you, and I, I see this in the hallways out here. I see a little preschooler get away and uh, running down the hall. Uh, uh, <laughs> Branson, <laughs> I've seen y'all do that. I mean, they're at one end and they're at the other and they are chasing them around. All right? And it's a beautiful sight to see. But I'm simply saying, as they got older, they would more likely want to be outside. They got bigger so they could see whether it was a male or a female. And all these things were going on 
So, so uh, Jochebed went to extreme uh, to protect her children. And then it says in verse 4, And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done. He, they thought, listen, if we let this baby put them in uh, the bull ru- put him in the bulrushes and this bascinet that we have, and we let it float towards Pharaoh's daughter. And, and again, folks, I believe uh, God was telling her this. I believe God uh, helps protection. I believe God inspires us to do things. And, and there's that mother's instinct, all right, to protect the children. When we were watching uh, this, uh, the lady come in and talk about Israel and what is going on in Israel, uh, you know, when the sirens would go off, the parents would come and they would literally lay on top, you know, not, not pressing the children, but to lay on top. That way, if, uh, you know, something hit close to them, they would protect the children's lives. And folks, you can, you can mess with a lot of things a woman has, but you don't mess with their children, all right? And so Jochebed had that maternal instinct to protect Moses. Verse 5, then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. And again, this, this had to be well planned. She had to know when she bathed and who would be there. So you can see this plan. God was uh, speaking to her. To her and, and folks, even the Bible tells us, uh, Jeremiah and others uh, that were born, even in the mother's womb, God has a plan for them. And it says, uh, And her maidens walked along the riverside, and when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. Hey, guess what made that baby weep? I believe it was God. Because who, what mother that has motherly instincts, when a baby starts crying, will not snatch, snatch them up in their arms and try to comfort the baby? Folks, God is in control of everything. He is. And it says, so she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. And when that sentence came up, she recognized that this was not an Egyptian. So what happened? God protected Moses' life. I believe because of a faithful mother. I believe because the will of God. I believe because God knew exactly who Moses was going to be and what he was going to do. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that, you, that she may nurse the child for you? Which again, in, in those days, and even in these, these days, that happens. Okay, uh, A lot of them have nannies. In verse 8, And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Now, was that an accident? No, folks. That's divine providence of God. Not only would Jochebed get to have Moses back, she paid her to take care of Moses. Is that not awesome, folks? We serve a mighty God. We serve a God that loves children. We serve a God uh, that, that is on the side of moms. I cannot tell you enough how special moms are. They are. Even when I was raised, I, the phrase back then was colicky baby. And from what I understand with a colicky baby, you really didn't want to be around him. All right? Because he hurt all the time and he cried all the time. Verse 9, Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. Folks, I am telling you, it took great faith on Jacobed's part to make that uh, bassinet and to let that child go down the river. It took faith. Two things that I want to point out here. First, faith. Hebrews 11. Look at Hebrews 11. 
Verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Folks, if we can do it, if we can make it happen, it's not faith. Faith is for the impossible. Faith is for the, the dire things in life. And I think one of the hardest things Jacobet had to do was to realize I have to let that child go for the protection of the own child. And what was it? It was faith on her part. And not just only faith, I'll tell you another thing that I, I know my mom uh, was really, really good at and did a lot of, and that is praying. Even as I got older and got into the ministry, my mom, uh, she told me uh, when we were talking uh, that, you know, I was the last one. All three of my sisters got married at 18 and got out of the house. Folks, I hung around till I was 22. Why? Because, man, I had it made. She made me three meals a day. She even made my bed for me when I was in college. Isn't that pathetic? <laughs> I mean, that's terrible on my part. But here's what mom said. I never went to sleep till you got home. Folks, God gives us the moms that we need. Because there was two years I wasn't walking with the Lord. And she would stay up at night and wait till she heard me come in. And I thank God for my mom. Isabel Ann Lopez Franklin. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Oh, listen to me, moms. Have a strong faith. Have a strong faith. It's never over till God says it's over. God can do miracles in the lives of your children and in the lives of your grandchildren. God can do miracles with your husband. God can do miracles. For he who comes to God must believe. Oh, folks, it's not positive thinking. While that is good, must believe is believing there is nothing God can't do. Believing that God can do the impossible. And you know what the problem with us is? It's the timing of the impossible. Sometimes we want it done right now when we pray. But yet, I thank God for those moms that keep praying and keep praying, and keep praying, and keep praying for their children. And it says, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, who is he? He's king of kings and lords of lords. He is God, Jehovah of the Bible. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I thank, for, I thank God for moms, and I've seen this all through the ministry, folks. I've been in the ministry 44 years, 44 years, and I'm telling you many times when it comes to going to church and teaching classes, it is the women that lead out in those areas. And I think our churches ought to thank God for the women that do that. And I really believe in my heart of hearts, they are going to have a special blessing when they get to heaven. That he is a rewarder of those who diligently uh, seek him. Her faith was strong. Her belief was strong. She, by faith, released her son to God. Psalm 127.3, children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is a reward. I remember... <laughs> talking to my uncle one time at a family reunion after I got saved and was a youth minister. And Uncle Joe said this to me, I never thought you were going to be a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, God can do the impossible. And I thank God much of that. And, and my father was a Christian father. He was. But I'm telling you, it was my mom that raised me. 
it, it was my mom that loved me. It was my mom uh, that took care of me. And I thank God for her. So we see a mother's love protects her children, releases them to God, and trusts God to finish the work. Look at the last verse there. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. I'm sure it was hard for Jacobed to realize that, you know, he's not coming home now. He's not coming home now. And that's, I'm sure, what she was thinking. But God had another plan. Oh, folks, the best place you can be in life is in the direct will of God. Sometimes the world tells us we need to do this. But the Bible tells us we shouldn't do that. Sometimes people advise us to do this. When in our hearts of hearts, we know we shouldn't do that. Folks, follow God's advice. Follow God's word. Doesn't matter. You don't have to take a vote. All right, the children of Israel, you know, the vote was 10 to 2 not to go into the land. And what did he get them? Death and 40 years of wandering in the wilderness god has a plan for you god has a plan for your children stay with that plan so she called his name moses saying because i drew him out of the water and folks we know in chapter three moses would called uh, to the ministry in the burning bush and we know the story there we know uh, even while he was a young adult, he saw two Egyptians beating up on a Hebrew uh, person, and, and he took one of them, and he literally killed, Moses killed uh, an Egyptian with his own, own hands and had to flee, and had to flee. Went away for 40 years. But folks, again, we serve a God of forgiveness. And I thank God for that. And then he came back. And he stood up to the most powerful man in Egypt and said, let my people go. And we know the plagues uh, that were done there. And we know that even later on, uh, he was the one that from the, the finger of God took the Ten Commandments and etched them and brought them to uh, the people and uh, the Ten Commandments are still, folks, so, so important. I truly don't understand somebody that says we should just live in the New Testament. No, we should live in the Bible, folks. The whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Those Ten Commandments are still important to God. And we saw how he led two million Jews. And how even with all that, even with messing up, God forgave him of his sin. Let me tell you something, parents. Never give up on your children. Never give up. Again, I'm not saying give them everything they want. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there will come a time in their life, because I was there, folks, where I needed my parents, and God used my parents to straighten out my spiritual walk with God. Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, 23. Hebrews 11, 23. The Bible says, <clears throat> By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. That is faith. By faith, Moses, when he became into age, Refused to be called the sons of Pharaoh. And the easiest thing for most of us to do would have been to stay there and be raised with money and school and the best education. But God had a call in his life, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Proverbs 22, 6. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Folks, there's always hope. 
There's always God. There's always prayer. There's always belief. There's always Scripture. We need to keep training up our children to walk with the Lord. Then the last Scripture, Philippians 1. Philippians 1. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Well, folks, there was a time in Moses' life where he made a terrible decision, terrible, to commit murder. But yet, God, later down the road, used him in a mighty way. Moms, we just want to say thank you. We want to say thank you as we end this service for all that you do. I, I can't even sit here and name all the things that you do behind the scenes that nobody knows of. The times that tears rolled down your face and you just thought, man, this isn't good. This isn't a good thing. But you just kept the faith and you kept praying. And moms, I'm just telling you, we can never repay you for what you have done. And we hope this day is a special day for you. You deserve it. You really do. And we thank God for it. In closing, I'd just like to say this. If there is a mom, or really if there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, if there's somebody here that... I uh, can't say that if I were to die today, I know I would go to heaven. We want to offer you an invitation. An invitation. And if God calls you, if you feel the Holy Spirit moving in you, would you just please come down and talk to one of us? We would love to talk to you. And maybe there's others that need to rededicate their life to Christ. You haven't been following the Lord as close as you had before. And God is speaking to you today and you want to recommit your life to Jesus Christ or come for baptism or come and join this church. Folks, if you've come three Sundays, you know who we are. We are a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Holy Spirit-inspired church of the living God. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for our moms. I just cannot thank you enough. It, it just really, sometimes we get so busy, we don't even reflect on what we had and who we had. And God, I know there's times that we didn't agree on things, and there was times I was the way we're child. But God, I thank you that you forgave me. You brought me back to church. You showed me true salvation. And God, I just pray, Lord, that you would do a work in our lives. God, we love you. We thank you. And we praise you for all you do. We thank you how you use our moms for your glory. And God, I thank you how you use moms in the ministry. We couldn't do what we do in this church without our moms. So God, I pray that you give them a special blessing this day. God, we love you. We thank you. And we praise you. God, we just give this invitation to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?